This is a Sandrini earthquake update for the 24th of February 2025. As of 12.06 GMT, uh, tide activity is at its minimum, the lowest coefficient that we'll see for the next uh, week or so. And earthquake intensity and frequency have found a baseline still above the norm and the epicenter area is widening. In this Santorini earthquake update, we look at the date for the last 24 hours and then dig into signs of volcanic activity. What are the chances of us seeing some lava seepage? So first of all, the data, the intensity and frequency data, as always, from VolcanoDiscovery.com. The seven-day data frequency might be showing an uptick in earthquake frequency over the past 12 hours. And then looking in a bit more resolution, looking at the 24-hour chart, that seems to be confirmed. Frequency of quakes has increased from around 10 hours ago. We're hitting that level, hitting that threshold more consistently over the past 12 hours than we have been before. So this is something to keep an eye on going into the next few days. Uh, epicenter location and movement, uh, looking at the NOA data. Again, looking at the NOA data, there's a link here to that raw data. For the past few days, the location of the epicenters are becoming more spread out. Usually it's quite easy to see where the center of the, ep of the daily epicenters are, if you like. But over the last uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, we are seeing a big area where we're seeing these pink dots before we just be seeing them in the pinks and sort of this area maybe they'd move to this area maybe they'd move here what that means i'm not sure coming on to ground movement uh, this is the uh, gnss stations the data here is around two to three days delay depending on the station so what we're seeing with regards to the movement of sandorini is the speed of movement is staying constant um, but downward movement could still be accelerated and this is something I've been saying every day I think for the last three or four days and it's still true today actually let's have a quick look at it and then we come on to the uh, downward movement and again I've been saying it for the last few days the movement uh, accelerating and I think we might you know it might even still be accelerating to this day you know, EOS Island which is up here uh, north and west movement is at a constant speed but uplift may be turning into a downward movement there and then coming on to Amorgos Island which is another of the key islands it is at the the other end of this uh, fault line that we are looking at Amorgos Island southerly movement is starting to turn into northerly movement it looks like it's starting to change direction and that would be not be normal its general direction is south and uh, westerly movement may have stopped uplift may be turning into a downward movement also uh, that, so that's the GNSS data uh, and then what I've done here I put an image I first used this on the 18th of February in the 18th of February update and uh, what I put here is the direction of movement of the islands and the red indicates like if a movement is not normal so for example here EOS is normally moving south not north Santorini is usually moving south not north and Morgos is usually using moving east not west and then just looking at what we've said today, everything is maintaining speed, except I think the big one is a Morgos changing from a northerly, uh, sorry, from a southerly direction, starting to move north. Now, looking at this one, we can see that Santorini and a Morgos are moving closer together. So logically speaking, I think we could say that would probably put some extra stress on the crust here. Would this starting to move north of a Morgos, logically speaking, reduce stress here has something given in the amorgos area and now it's started to move north and it's reducing the stress in this area here could we potentially be seeing something like that because it's westerly movement also could be stopping and it's just gonna just moving north maybe so could that be a reason that we're seeing reduced uh, seismic activity and intensity all round because something is given here and morgos is has given up if you like and is, is starting to take away the stress from this area and also if we're reducing stress here on the crust would that explain why EOS and Amorgos might be starting to drop rather than rise it's a hypothesis I think it's I don't think it's a bad one obviously we don't know for sure the next few days will um, will paint us a better picture in summary i think from a volcanic let us say seismic point of view i think the general trend at the moment is towards downward movement but this is assuming that we're not seeing uplift in anhydros 
could anhydros be absorbing magma from the surrounding areas? Let's go on to the seismic comparison, seismograph comparison for anhydros island. We have the 22nd of February here versus the 24th. I think generally it's safe to say that we're looking at smoother lines on the 24th and less earthquake activity and of a smaller intensity I would say generally so again a calming down of activity and then we come on to the big question volcanic activity how likely is it to happen there has been some speculation of volcanic eruption being possible be it in Santorini itself Colombo volcano or perhaps even a new vent somewhere else what are the general signs of an imminent volcanic eruption and how do they compare to what we are seeing around Santorini so there's an article here on GeoNet, which is a New Zealand website, and it has an article which describes many of the potential signs of a volcano. So all in all, what does that mean? Having a quick look at this guide. While the Santorini earthquake swarm is giving us some evidence which may suggest volcanic activity, i.e. the earthquakes and the ground movements and the island movements that we're seeing, I think those things on their own is not, not really enough. So that's looking at you know the general warning signs of volcanic activity let's look at something a bit, bit, bit more specific to the area there is a, a YouTube channel Earth Observation and it was linked to from the Euro Mediterranean Seismological Center so it's a French video but it has subtitles it's got three academics I think uh, that are the people on the uh, video it's here I've linked to it in the video article if you want to see it I think it's well worth um, spending some time to uh, watch through I'll tell you the key things I took from the video. Um, first of all was their assessment of the earth, earthquake swarm in general. They said it's very unusual and perhaps it's unprecedented. It's something like this has never been recorded before. And something especially unusual about the swarm was that there wasn't a big initial earthquake. So we're not, we can't argue that we're seeing like uh, aftershocks. Another aspect they highlighted as unusual is the moving of the center of the earthquakes. I detail this uh, in some of the updates like where is the the center of the epicenters on a daily basis and I've said that you know sometimes we can say it's in this area then they'll move here then they'll move here there's like big changes on a daily basis and these people here are saying that yeah and they're saying that this is very unusual to have the swarms moving around so much they would expect like the general center of a of of the earthquakes to be moving in a gradual predictable manner but we've seen the, the group move up and down left and right big differences on a daily basis and the last thing that caught my attention in this video was a diagram they had for Anidros Island it showed magma rising below the island with the uh, island being the top of a constructive plate margin magma rising under Anidros and then flowing northeast and southwest so here is what I'm talking about there is a magma chamber under Anidros around six to eight kilometers I think six to eight or eight to ten kilometers deep and this study which is linked to here and linked to again in the article is proposing that there's um, fluids rising here and it's forming crust either uh, left and right now this would be consistent with what we've said for EOS Island EOS is moving to the west and Anidros may be staying in the same place so I've said that maybe there is a fault between or on Anidros Island which is pushing EOS to the left this is why we're seeing EOS move I'll just go into this study a bit bit more because it is interesting so the study that this picture is from the abstract a part of the abstract says this in Anidros most of the micro earthquakes have a positive non DC component associated with the opening of cracks it is possible that the extensional deformation and high pore fluid pressure in the area open subvertical cracks that become pathways for up, my, upward migrating fluids. The upward migration of magmatic fluids in, ex, in an, an extensional regime, i.e. things extending left and right and magma coming up, in an extensional regime such as the Santorini Amorgo zone can also be viewed as an indication of emerging volcanic activity in this area so there is decent data research being done to suggest that it wouldn't be out of the ordinary or it wouldn't be surprising if we did see a new volcano in this area the earthquakes that we've seen around Anidros now are they being caused by cracks opening up and fluid rising 
the depth of the earthquakes had been getting shallow until a few days ago, i.e. more earthquakes occurring around two kilometres. But having said that, over the past few days, well, up over the past five to seven days, act, uh, seismic activity has dropped a lot. So on the hand, other hand, we, we were coming into a time when earthquake depth was shallowing, but at the same time, we've seen earthquake intensity and frequency drop. What's the summary? I would say that the amount of data available is not great. And I would say from these sources alone and their current trends, I don't think it's pointing towards a volcanic eruption. But having said that, there is key data missing. Like we don't have gas emissions data and we don't have vertical movement for Colombo or Anidros Island. I mean, if they were to say that, yeah, the gas emissions from Colombo volcano, for example, were changing in a way that suggests volcanic eruption and the vertical movement in Anidros Island was like 50 centimeters over the past week then I would have a completely different thought of what is going to happen but I can only deal with what I've got and at the moment from the data that you can see that I've shown you in, in today's update I don't see evidence for there being uh, volcanic activity at the moment so Santorini quake update for the 24th of February the summary Basically, there's a lot of data pointing towards a calming of seismicity in the area. A possible exception is the earthquake frequency over the past 24 hours. Tomorrow's Santorini update will help us judge if that last 12 hours increase in frequency is just a blip or not. And if the tide has any effect, now would be the quiet time because the difference between high and low tide at the moment is the lowest it's going to be for a while. Uh, the next step up in tide size will be tomorrow the 25th of February from around 1 a.m. onwards. High tide will be at 3.40 a.m. and this will go quite to quite a low tide at around 10.40 a.m. If the tides are having any effect, there may be some increases in seismic activity around these times. We will have to see. If you've got time, give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, want to get more updates, subscribe to the channel. Look after yourselves and I'll see you again in the next update.